Hello guys, this time we will see usage of forms in Angular. We have several users and as you can see we can delete some of the fields. Also to add new, we can set values inside of uh, those fields which are pre-filled. And uh, this is the output of the form. So if we type uh, something else here we see that the output is uh, automatically uh, updated. Let's say that if we have uh, more rows, we can patch some uh, values. Let's say that we would like to patch just uh, the email of a certain user. We can do so. Also, we can uh, get data from server and uh, prefill uh, dynamically those um, fields. So if I click it from server, we see that uh, we have received this data and filled uh, our form. All right, let's go to Visual Studio Code and see how we can realize those methods. So the first thing I would like to do is to go to appmodule.ts and import the reactive forms module. Then we'll place the module inside of our imports. When we go to component, we see that uh, we are importing form group, form array, validators, form builder uh, from Angular forms. And then we have uh, some server data, which is mockup. It's a JSON object with date and two data of uh, two users instead of the user's array. And this is the actual uh, component. We are having one form and uh, several buttons. Those buttons are attached to uh, certain functions. So whenever we click on the buttons, we will uh, run uh, those functions. And uh, inside of the form, we have uh, controls. And now we'll see how uh, we ha can uh, realize those controls. So the moment uh, the component loads, we are attaching to the ng init hook and uh, we are building uh, the user form uh, using the uh, form builder uh, group. So we are creating one uh, group of components and uh, this group allows us to have uh, special properties such as users and date here listed and uh, for the date we are using our current date uh, for the users we're using a form builder array in order to build an array of two users which actually inside have a group of uh, three controls so this is our uh, structure inside of those controls we have default values and validators some of the validators are using uh, email rejects uh, in order to validate for example the uh, email field okay once we know the structure let's see how we are implementing the structure inside of the form. So we go to the component uh, HTML uh, template. And uh, the first thing we would like to do is to bind a form group to our uh, users form, uh, which we currently created. And uh, users form is initially empty, but on ng on it, we're filling it with the uh, data. Why we do this? Because afterwards we can use this users form uh, we create it it's a variable holding our form and we can use a getter to get a specific field and by using a value and a pipe of date we can grab the current date and this one here and format it uh, so actually with get date we are accessing exactly this field here uh, date so we are grabbing the form and with get date we are accessing the date with get users we'll be accessing these users all right now let's see for the users what we do so we are getting the users so we type again users form get users and uh, we are interested inside of the controls of uh, uh, these users so we are grabbing get users since this is an array with two elements first and second we have to do a for loop uh, to go over each of them and that's why we use this ng4 inside of user form group we are saving everything what's inside of the users uh, controls when we are ready we have our form group and we are binding it here so we are creating the html representation of uh, this uh, form group so it's a little bit hard uh, to grasp uh, at first, but actually we have arrays and we have form groups and we have controls. Okay, once it's bound, we can use uh, the controls inside. So that's how we bind the form control name to the first name, uh, to the last name and to the email. 
we're also using the I parameter here in order to be able to know which element we can remove by passing the I index to the remove control uh, function. So actually uh, what's inside of the ng container is representing uh, in the template what we have built here programmatically. Now we can take a look at the different functions. For example, remove control. Again, we are getting the users and uh, we have a direct method which is remove at because we're casting this as a form array and uh, we are removing a certain element at a certain index which is passed. Uh, also, we have uh, patch values. So for this function, again, we are getting the users array. Okay, we have two ways of uh, patching the uh, values. So one is directly to pass the whole array. And since we have uh, two initial elements, we are passing the first element. So we would like to patch the email of the first uh, user. The other is to choose initially uh, the role of this array, which we would like to pass by passing index here. So we are interested in the first uh, member and directly to pass the object with the data we would like to patch. So you can choose what is more suitable for you. They both uh, work the same. And then we have uh, set values. Uh, set values is different than patch values because uh, set values uh, requires strict uh, passing of all the fields uh, which are needed uh, to be patched. So if I delete a certain thing from email or last name and I just want to update a first name with set value, it will give me an error. Uh, so set value is good to have a strict uh, binding uh, from the form to the model. And then we have a function uh, get info. We are using the form, we get reference to certain field of our form, such as the users. Then we use this uh, field, which is an array. We grab uh, from the first user, uh, first name, and with the value, we can display the name. Next, uh, we are adding a new rows. Again, we have reference uh, to our users. Uh, also, we uh, calculate the length of uh, the user's array and we save the length in array len. And then we compose a new user. Actually, it's a form group of three controls. We are creating the controls information here. And the last thing uh, which we do is uh, to insert inside of our forms array, or this is the parent uh, uh, form, at the last place, because uh, this is actually forms array dot length, it will point to the last uh, element uh, uh, index inside of the array. And we are inserting the composed uh, uh, form group uh, here, which is new array group. And now something interesting, uh, let's say that we have uh, already uh, server data, which is in this form, we have received it from uh, REST API. Uh, we would like to see how we can transform this data and build uh, dynamically a form. And this is done by the uh, function uh, get server data. Uh, so there are two ways of uh, filling and creating uh, the data. Uh, the first one, uh, which I uh, prefer, is uh, first to create an empty uh, form group with the initial structure of users and the date. And uh, the users, as you can see, is uh, an array which is empty. And then uh, to get a reference as an users array, uh, to the field of users, so to this empty array here. And uh, the next step is just to loop over the adjacent values with the map and to push into this empty array the new users. Okay, this is one way. The other way is uh, we are using here two steps. First, uh, we are creating an empty array and then we are pushing the data inside. Let's say like this, we are commenting this row here and uh, Actually, we can uh, use it uh, in one step. Basically, we're creating the form group. And for the users directly, we are creating array, uh, which is already pre-filled with the data. Uh, you can choose which method you prefer. All right, guys, uh, that's the form. Uh, you can play with it. I hope uh, this will make your life with forms in Angular a little bit lighter. And if you have enjoyed the information, you can uh, subscribe to the channel.